If you're thinking about moving to the Fort Walton Beach area or Shalimar specifically, you're going to want to watch today's video. We're going to do a vlog style tour of Shalimar Point, which is the premier or one of the two premier neighborhoods in Shalimar, Florida. It is a golf course community. It has a tennis club attached to it. It's on the water. I mean, it has just about everything you could possibly want. And we're going to get after it right now. Shalimar Point now. Now, if you guys are headed to Eglin Air Force Base from the Beale side, this would actually be the road that you're going on. Of course, if you're coming from Shalimar Point, which we'll be talking about here in a minute, then it would be on the other side. But we'll show you that here in a second. This is a nice little workaround. Got some food truck action. I will say that is one thing that we have a lot of in this area is food trucks and they're so much fun when you want like really good food without like a ton of cost or a ton of like like feeling like you need to be dressed a certain way or anything like that it's just super chill it's really good food and usually pretty like decently priced and then up here on the left is timber lake so you're going to hear me talk about in a little bit when we get to shalomar point about some of the outdoor activities that are nearby that's timber lake that's the main area that i'm going to be discussing because it is just a few short minutes away from shalomar point uh you can do hiking biking mountain biking geocaching um camping um trail riding um, all sorts of stuff down there. Now make sure that you go to, you need to go into Niceville to the Jackson Guard and get a pass. I don't remember how much they are right now. They used to be $2 prior to COVID uh, for the whole year. I believe they are a little bit more expensive right now, but don't quote me on that. They're probably not gonna be any more than about 10 bucks. You do have to take a small test uh, don't worry, they make it very easy. The test is basically asking you questions like, if you come across an explosive, what do you do? Don't touch it. That's the answer. <laughs> Keep in mind that Eglin Air Force Base is the country's largest bomb testing center. So bombs, missiles, rockets, anything that explodes, they like to test out here. It is borderline impossible or uh, very unlikely improbable that you will find uh, what they call a UXO, an unexploding ordinance out here while you're roaming around but you might. So that's why they make you take that test just in case. Don't play with explosives, kids, unless it's from the fireworks stand. So here on the right side, if you were to come into here, that would be the start of Paquito Bayou. That is one of three entrances to Paquito. Um, probably the least used entrance out of all of them. I will, uh, I'll show you the other one that we are going to pass by here in a bit. Paquito Bayou is another one of the premier neighborhoods in Shalimar. Um, in fact, it is the other one that most people um, relate to whenever they're looking for kind of a planned neighborhood in the Shalimar area. It is uh, very similar to uh, Kenwood, which we've done another video on. Uh, we We'll throw that up in the cards at the top right. If you want to check that out, uh, you definitely can. This is Eglin or 85 that we're turning on to now. And once we make this right, on the left, you're going to see the Armament Museum, which is really cool. You can take a tour inside or just stay outside and take a look at all the uh, retired aircrafts. In fact, if you look at the uh, seven things to do in Fort Walton Beach, this is one of them. You'll see me in front of many of these aircrafts. I actually used to fly on a variant of that one right there that you're seeing um, back when I was active duty a long time ago. Uh, but super cool. That's the um, SR-71, my favorite airplane. I'm kind of a nerd about 
about it. It should have been the RS-71, but the president screwed it up in his speech. And they didn't want to make him look bad, so they changed the name of the aircraft. So reconnaissance aircraft, it actually stretches like 12 feet because it goes so fast. It stretches the entire um, cargo compartment. And they actually end up having to replace something like, I don't know, 500 nuts and bolts every time this thing takes off. It's insane. But it can take a picture of a dime and it can tell you the year of that dime from like 50,000 feet up, which is borderline space, like above, I think it's like 40,000 is when you start needing an astronaut outfit. And these guys actually fly up there and they can take a picture that, that pristine, it's insane. So there on the right, we just passed it. I, I was rambling, sorry about that, but this is the rest of Paquito Bayou. So um, obviously it's all surrounded by trees. Paquito is very private. Um, it's not closed off. There's not, you know, it's not a, a gated community or anything like that, uh, but it is kind of like a nice little quiet area. In fact, I drove by here every day when I was working at Eglin Air Force Base and never knew it was here until I became a realtor. About a year into becoming a realtor, I showed my first property back there and I was like, I didn't even know this was back here. This is amazing. So kind of cool. This is the entrance into Shalimar right now that we're kind of going into. You'll see as we crest over this hill, you'll see um, the elementary school here on the left side. In fact, we're about to have to slow down for that because they are letting out right now. So you can kind of see some of that. We are going to slow it down. Don't want to hit any kids, although there's never any kids out here, but we got to be safe. I'm actually going to take you all the way through. If we wanted to, we could take this left and we would get into Shalimar Point. It's actually, let's do that because then we could do the driving tour while we're at it. So you guys, yes, I am still here with Mongo, but I'm being the camera woman today because I lost my voice. So um, this is how dedicated we are to our videos for you guys. I was in the ER like five days ago and then yesterday woke up with no voice. I'm okay, but uh, you know, the show must go on. So Mongo's going to be doing most of the talking for us today. So, you know, sorry, you got to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to a really good point. Um, we do want to thank all of our returning subscribers. And if you're a brand new subscriber, we want to thank you for following us as well, or at least watching this video. If you get any value out of this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then ding that little bell that comes up right after it. Right on the move again. Right before we do this, I need another bite of my energy. <laughs> another bite of your energy bite. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to have too much energy. <laughs> Be bouncing off walls for you guys. <laughs> so we're in Shalimar proper right now. All right, so we are heading into Shalimar Point. We're going to see Shalimar Point Golf Club. We're going to see the houses. We're going to see the tennis club. We're going to see the water. We're going to see lots of things. Nice. And my car is going to be. <laughs> oh. Not to worry, just a little old phone battery fixed. I'm not gonna be able to keep you guys on the map because whenever I record the map, it uh, kind of shows every time the map flickers and it's kind of frequently, um, it's not really perceptible to the human eye whenever we're looking at it straight, but from another screen it is, and I don't want anybody to have a seizure. So this is the gate here going into it. You've got the tennis club on your right side. We are going to start heading that way at first. This is an unmanned gate. Keep that in mind. After hours though, it does close up and you do need access. So everybody, all the residents have access. <laughs> some more apple cider. Yeah, I want to make sure I'm hydrated. You can see we've got some water view already straight up ahead. Yeah, in fact, on the right side, which we're not going to go to because there is no outlet there. Um, you'll have everything on the left is the bay and then on the right side is actually Lake Lorraine Lake Which is a lake that actually goes into the harbor, which is or the bay, which is pretty cool So if you're looking for a home that has Great access to all of this, but also a little protection with some extra houses and land between you then up here on the right side is the better way to go now There's only about 20 houses down there, but if you're lucky enough to find one It does give you some extra protection from hurricanes and stuff then everything here on the left side You're still gonna be protected because you still got Destin you still have the island all of that stuff is gonna take a big brunt of most of it It's not gonna be as protected as those guys, right? So right here behind us um, Which you're not gonna be able to grab I know but that's the uh, tennis club. So um, several different leagues play here. There's three that I know of. I'm confident there are probably more. 
um, but all from about Santa Rosa Beach all the way to about Pensacola or Gulf Breeze will come here to play on at least one of those tennis um, tennis clubs. And then the really cool part is up here at the golf course. We are gonna get out and we'll show you some of this stuff as well. The golf course is currently closed. I do not know what the condition of it looks like right now. It is closed for re remodeling, excuse me, and should be back up um, June of 2023, so next month. Supposedly doing a whole bunch to this, but as I'm looking around, it doesn't look like it is fully done or close to it because I still see a lot of different sand areas and stuff. And this is the clubhouse here and the golf shop on the right side. They were renovated not too long ago, a couple years, I believe. You've got the chipping green that you're seeing that Miss AJ is showing right now and the putting green as well. And then right here, you've got the driving ring. The driving range does give you um, some pretty good distance between you and the houses, but if you do wail on the golf balls, you can actually get pretty close to those houses, which is always fun. And then the first tee box is up here. Should be creeping into view right about now. This is an 18 hole golf course. Um, it was picked up by Edwin Watts, I don't know, four or five years ago. And then I believe he flipped it fairly quickly is what I'm understanding. Although I'm not in tune enough with the history to fully know that. Um, but pretty cool little neighborhood here. I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go up here just cause we get some good shots of the water. There are currently around six or seven lots out here. Uh, that are not picked up. As you can see here, this private property here on our right side is actually owned by one of the neighbors. There's two different lots here. And there's no outlet, so we're not going to go down here, but that's all waterfront over here. There's approximately 60 homes that are waterfront that you could pick up if that is something uh, that you're looking to do. And then you've got the 18th hole there on the right that AJ is currently pointing the camera at. So that is where you would end. You'd cross the street and you'd be done for the day. What's really cool about this is if you look at this sign right here where it says fairways, that we're passing right there, um, there's a bunch of little tiny neighborhoods like that scattered all throughout here. And they're not really neighborhoods, they're just like little subsections off. So you're like, oh, I live over there on the fairways. I live over there on, you know, whatever the other names are, right? Which is kind of cool. here you can expect the prices in this area to be about four hundred thousand to about two and a half million at its highest um, and of course anything above about eight hundred thousand is probably because it is on the water everything else should be a little bit uh less you know less of a price tag and it kind of weaves in and out just like we're seeing right here where there's you know, a small little street with five or 10 homes here, another little one over here with five or 10 homes. That's kind of how the entire neighborhood is split up. And of course, if you do live here, you have a golf cart, you can take that in and out, use that as your primary means of getting in and out of the neighborhood if you wanted to, or mainly staying within the neighborhood. I shouldn't say in and out because you really shouldn't be driving it outside of the neighborhood mm -hmm. unless it is street legal, of course. Um, but as you can see, these gentlemen in front of us that are clearly golfing, taking a little break, um, you can always stop by at your house, grab a delicious soda pop or a brewski or something like that, and, uh, and then head right back out to the golf course. You'll see a lot of times there's one gentleman, I don't know if he lives here anymore, because uh, it's been a while since I've been out golfing here, but when I used to golf all the time, 
They'd come out here and there was a guy that would come out with his, his seven, his driver, and his putter. And that's all he would come out with, just those three clubs, out at night, practice on two or three of the holes, and then leave. Now, I know you're supposed to pay for it when you golf. I, I'm confident he was not. Uh, but uh, but kind of a nice little perk of being on a golf course in general. And, of course, at night, once twilight hits and everybody's gone, you can walk the golf course, you take your dog out, what have you. Just make sure you take pick up after your, your dog if you're going to do that. We appreciate it. <laughs> this is a fun fact actually. For anybody that's been watching our channel for a while, you've probably hear me say all the time, or if you've commented or something, hey, what about the crocodiles? What about you know, crocodiles, alligators, uh, whatever, right? The only time I've ever seen a croc in Florida outside of at Fud Puckers, which is a restaurant that has them all over. It's part of the, the tourist trap, the ploy, right? They even walk around with these little miniature alligators so that you can pet them with their mouths um, closed shut, you know, so they're not going to bite you. But anyway, the only other time that I've seen a gator in public um, was out here. I, I keep saying crocodile, um, but you know what I mean. They're, they're kind of the same almost. Um, <laughs> they both go chump, chump. Yeah, they both go chump, chump. Both not super fun. This is the lynx area here. In fact, we should cross the little lake that I see. There's a little mini gator. Maybe we'll see him if we get lucky. He's not a very big one, or at least he wasn't the last time I was here. But he would be up here on the right uh, in a ways. You're not going to see it quite yet. Please don't feel, don't feed the alligators or crocodiles, whichever one that you see. Please don't <laughs> feed them. We don't need like a Lake Placid situation. Of so this is one of the areas that he'll hang out in, although he stopped doing that several years ago. I think it's because it's more trafficked. So, you know, you're in a true golf course community when the main road is called the Masters. <laughs> Give you guys some front facing views of some of these beautiful houses. I've shown a couple of these properties and I will say they have some very interesting floor plans. <laughs> yeah, some of them are very interesting. There is, uh, there's one on the other side I should have pointed out, uh, but you just reminded me. The floor plan is really funky and they've got this whole back room that they've turned into like a, um, a golf shrine, if you will. Uh, it's got golf grass on the floor. It's got, um, you know, it, it just everything is golf. There's like just a bunch of stuff on the walls and everything. It's pretty cool. It's all painted green. The like the whole room is painted like a sky at a certain level. It's really odd. Um, the worst or the weirdest part about it was it was a three bedroom home and that was one of the bedrooms. So they basically turned it into a two bedroom and it was set on the market for a long time. This is years ago, of course, but. feature because it's right over there that's all right now if you've never lived in a golf course community please remember if you're on the golf course directly depending on where you're at you may get hit with golf balls all the time especially if you're on like kind of in the middle of a par four or par five it is very common for people to smack golf balls up against your house don't be mad it's just part of it now if they break a window well then you can be upset So now we've gone through Shalimar Point. Let's talk about the proximity to some of the things that might be important to you if you are thinking about moving your family down here. So one of the most important things is schools to a lot of people. So we've got uh, the three main schools that you need, elementary, middle, and high. Two of those are seven minutes away. So you've got um, Shalimar Elementary, which is right down the road. Right as soon as you come out, you'll head all the way down. You'll go right, and you'll run right into it. And then you've got Meg's Middle School. Um, you are going to have to do one extra turn to go down to Meg's Middle School. Um, both are very highly rated schools. Meg's is um, 
man, it was top five for something, um, top five in academic or something like that, um, in the county. And the county is number three in the state out of all of the counties. Six to seven counties, Okaloosa County is ranked number three. This is according to either niche.com or, um, oh, what was the other site? I'm pretty sure it was niche.com, right? Then we've got Choctawahatchee High School, which um, we passed by a little bit earlier. Um, that's all the way out in Fort Walton. That is gonna take about 10 to 11 minutes to get to. It is a fairly straight shot, which is good. Um, that makes it a little bit easier there. And then of course, if you are flying in and out, having an airport nearby is very important. That is one of the great advantages of this neighborhood. It was one of the few master plan um, neighborhoods in our area that is within 10 minutes of the airport. It's actually about 10 to 11, depending on traffic, um, but you shouldn't have too much traffic going out there. That's pretty rare. And then you've got Highway 98, which will get you to drive into Destin, get you to go to Pensacola to Panama City Beach. That's the main road that runs along our coastline, um, not directly, but just off of the coastline. And that's about 14 minutes away. And then of course, for those of you guys looking to go into Destin, maybe go out for drinks, go out for the night, go shopping, um, just do any of the tourist style things that are out in Destin. Um, that is approximately 20 to 25 minutes away, depending on traffic. Um, if there's no traffic, you can get there in 20, of course, if there's more, it could actually take more than 25, just depending on what's going on. Uh, but that's, you know, not all the time. It's generally during the peak seasons. For those of you guys that are watching us for the very first time, we thank you for finding us. If you find this valuable at all, make sure you hit that like button. And of course, subscribe and ding that little bell. If you're a returning subscriber, we do appreciate you guys coming back. That's always awesome. We are realtors first. So if you're curious about Shalimar Point or really any neighborhood uh, in the Florida Panhandle, you can reach out to us. We're going to throw up all of our information right here on the screen. You can follow us on social. You can send us a message, a DM. You can text, email. There's a Calendly link inside of the remarks section there. So it makes it real easy for you guys if you want to book an appointment to talk to us it's you know no skin off our back we really do appreciate talking to you guys even if you're not sure if you're coming down here don't hesitate to reach out and we will get you situated in the best way that we can so now talking about pricing i know i, I touched on a little bit earlier um but the pricing here in the Shalimar Point area is going to be anywhere from about 400000 on the low end all the way up to about $2.5 million on the high end. There could be something that pops up even higher than that if one of these larger homes that are on the water come up on the market um, or any of them like kind of down at the end near the Lake Lorraine uh, Lake uh, because they've just got a lot more waterfront and they're a little bit bigger lots. Uh, but those are just kind of the general pricing that you're going to see. Most of them are going to hover in the four hundred dollars to six hundred dollars price range. Now, of course, the bigger home you get, the more it's going to be. Most of these homes are going to range around 2,200 to 2,600 square feet. Um, there will be some smaller, there will be some bigger, of course, but that's the, the big bulk of it. And then as far as the ages of most of these homes, almost all of them are from 1988 to about 2000. Because there are some lots that are still un undeveloped, you will see some that are newer than that. You won't see any that are older than that. They've all been demolished to, to create what we've got here. Um, but you might see something a little bit newer there. As you saw, whenever we first came in, that house that was on the left right when we come through the gate um, was just being built. There are several of those and there are some lots available. Uh, so if that is something that you're interested in, we could always reach out to those owners and see if they are willing to sell. Now, as for the things to do nearby, Shalimar is a little bit smaller of a town, but you've got Fort Walton right next door. So you've got everything from Fort Walton that we're always talking about. I mean, there's so, so much stuff to do there that we haven't hit at all in these videos, right? But here in Shalimar alone, if you're looking for restaurants, we've got lots of great restaurants around here. Three of note are the Aegean restaurant. This is a Greek food. Really, 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 really good tzatziki so there. So good. It's so good. Then we've got the Twisted Grape, which is a fun kind of wine and charcuterie board. Um, place, um, although it's not just charcutes, okay? Uh, they also have sandwiches and, and a bunch of other good, uh, good little sandwich, um, or sorry, lunch style food there, you know, salads, things like that. A really cool little place. Uh, they'll really help you out with the wine selection and stuff like that, uh, if that's what you're looking for. Now for you beer drinkers, there is a place, it's actually one of my favorite little hole in the walls, hideout little places here um, in all of Fort Walton actually. It's one of my favorite places. It's called Shalimar Cheers. It's been out here, I mean, as long as I can remember, I think it's been here since the 80s. It's kind of tucked away a little bit um, where we had just turned on when we turned left into town. It would have been there on the right. We were kind of chatting uh, when I was sitting at that stoplight, but if you would have go, gone right, right there, that's Shalimar Cheers. They've got like, I want to say it's 85 or 90 beers right there on tap. Super friendly. The food is great. Um, their wings in particular are really good. Their burgers are out of this world. They're absolutely insane. It's one of my favorite burgers in town. Um, so those are three great restaurants right there. 
Now, if you're looking for something healthy to eat, Clean Eats is right here in town as well. Um, lots of different kind of clean options there for you. Some that are low fat, some that are just tons of veggies and, and some meat. Um, so some great options. Now, for those of you that are going to want to get out on the water, but you don't have a waterfront home, that's fine. There are two main boat launches that are really close to you. There's all sorts all across Fort Walton Beach, but there's two main ones that you might want to go to. One of them is up the road at Paquito Bayou. Um, I kind of vaguely mentioned that when we we're coming in, you know, that wooded area. There's a boat launch there that is public for everybody. And then you've got uh, the Meg's Park uh, just to the south of us as well. That is probably one of your better options. It is very wide. It is very easy to get in and out of, uh, to take a boat in and out, or if you're just throwing a, a stand-up paddle board or something, there's tons of room out there. So those are your best two options for that if you guys are still with us then you must have found some kind of benefit to our video so please hit that like button so we can help others as well and we will see y'all at the next one see you guys